Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu and in this video to celebrate 4,000 followers on Instagram, I'll be casting a logo that I've designed, so the Instagram logo, into epoxy resin. So it looks like it's floating and all like the separate parts are kept together to form one logo. So I'll be taking you through the steps of the 3D printing, the casting and the finishing of the parts and you'll all see that in this video. So to start with, so the logo was designed in Fusion 360 and then like extruded some profiles and printed on an Ender 3S1. Make sure to follow me on Instagram if you want to stay up to date of future videos. I post daily about future projects to come on my Instagram. So it was printed on a 0.4 nozzle, 0.12 layer height. Print it on a carbon fiber bed. That video can be found on the top right if you're interested in that. It's still holding well, so after two weeks of testing, uh, more information will come about that carbon fiber plate uh, in future videos as well. So to print the um, other parts to so the mold box, I've used my second Ender 3S1 with a 0.8 nozzle. Uh, printing at 0.6 layer height and PLA. So that way I was able to to create like a mold box in a fast way. If you want to use melamine, it's possible as well. But as you might see, uh, doing some rounded edges is a bit more difficult using melamine or wood. So that's why I went for the 3D printing. So I still had some gaps. So you don't want to have gaps in your mold box because that will cause some leaks. So I've used some UV resin uh, using using the flashlight to like seal uh, the little gaps that I still had. So now we're creating like the base plate where we'll put everything on. So I'm using some Easily, so it's a chemical release agent from Easy Composites. And then the mold box gets um, some spray uh, release as well. So I want to remove it at the end. So you'll see that later on in the video. And that's why I've added some release agent on the mold box as well. So here I'm just like creating the object. So as these are all separate um, extrusions, I've decided to like just tack them on the bottom plate using some UV resin as well. Um, why not use like uh, quick glue, like CA glue? I found out that in epoxy resin, it sometimes leaves some marks, but maybe it depends on the brand, but it's possible as well. So I'm using some hot glue to like close uh, the mold box to avoid leaks. Later on you'll see I still had some leaks, uh, but I'll talk about that later. So about the resin, I'm using some epoxy resin. So it's the glass cast range from Easy Composites. And as so far, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe and ring that bell to get notified of future videos. So the glass cast 50 range is the one for thicker pores. So as the number might seem weird, it's still, I think, 30 millimeters in height. Make sure that uh, you have the right um, temperatures in your workshop, because if you have too high temperatures, it will cure too rapidly, uh, too quickly, and cause like an exothermal reaction. If you're too low in temperature, it just won't cure. Um, the advantage is here that I'm able to cast bigger volumes because the workshop is quite cold at the moment. So I have about 12 degrees ambient temperature and that way I'm able to cast this in one piece. So I'm just pouring it from the top uh, in the middle of the ring and then let the air rise and then I degassed uh, the resin once again. So I've mixed it, degassed it, poured it into the object and degassed it again. Um, you could also use a pressure pot that will probably for be for a future video so I know now also have a pressure pot. So the difference between vacuum and pressure is that vacuum will remove the air, so um, get the bubbles to the, the top, and pressure will like compress all the air bubbles into like tiny, tiny little bubbles that you won't be able to see in your finished, uh, your finished pour. So once it cured, so it took about two days, I'm able to remove the base plate, and now we can continue to pour like new resin on the back. So I still had some like small air pockets. Uh, it's not too bad because now I'm able um, to remove them from the back. So I just use a sharp knife, open the little gaps, sand the back again. 
uh, to create a good bond with the layers that will be coming on top and then we can proceed with the second pour. So I prepared everything the same way so fixed like a new mold box on top and now we can pour. So as you might see so it's a smaller pour now it's just 10 millimeters in height. Um, the resin is like going over the air pockets and not into the air pockets so what you might use is like um, a tiny little stick just to get like the resin in and the air bubbles out or you can use the degassing chamber again to remove the air that was stuck into these bubbles and now it's just a waiting game so you wait for the resin to fully cure um, make sure it's like totally fully cured so it took about two days again and then you're able to demold the parts so as you might see the mold box the 3d printed mold box left some marks but these will be sanded away as well as you'll have some sharp edges on to the top sides of your pour so I first manually remove them with some sandpaper and then use um, my sanding machine just to remove like the imperfection on the top using some 150 grit sandpaper so now that, now that we have everything square and all the uh, marks of the 3d prints are removed you can proceed with like the finer detail so I start with the 150 again 220, 300, 500, and then 800 to get the result that we have here. So now we still have a dull finish, but everything is like flat. And now we can proceed to the fin finishing steps being the 1000 grit wet sanding. So that will leave like a good finish already to finish everything with a 2000 um, just to get it even finer. So Obviously the higher you go or the more steps you take in between the better the results But for me, this is a good way of working uh, Getting pretty re good results that you'll see at the end of this video So now that we have everything nicely sanded we can proceed to the polishing So this is like the the fan part because now you'll start to see the gloss coming onto the part So I'm using some fine uh, polishing compound now uh, with a lower cut so it's a lower cut of the polishing giving me some good results uh, as you might see here so now we have a fully gloss uh, finished part if you don't want to go through all the sanding and the polishing what you could also do is sand it till 500 and then use a clear coat um, like a polyurethane 2k clear coat with a spray gun to get a good result as well. So we still have a little bit of marks of the UV resin. Um, there are some other ways of doing this. This will probably be featured in future videos as well. Uh, but so far, I think this is a good result. So um, if you liked this video, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment if you have some questions. I'll go through all the comments and answer most of your questions. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.